Hey guys, my name is Masandra and I make crochet tutorials and crochet patterns. So you're welcome to my channel if you're seeing my face for the first time. And if you are one of my old subscribers, thank you so much for coming. You're welcome. So in this video, I am making a one-on-one -on -one crochet tutorial. So it's been a minute. I know I've been having requests this so and all and I haven't made time to. Now I am. I am going to teach you guys the basic of the basic of crocheting. Um, how to make a slip knot, how to make a chain, how to make a single crochet, half double crochet, and a double crochet. We are going to start with those five for the first video, and I do plan on making this a series um, so I can teach you guys the basic tips and all the things I've learned along my crochet journey as well. So let me know if you guys are excited and you want to see something like that. Um, with all these stitches and all these steps, you should be able to make one of my crochet patterns. If you've been wanting to make one of them, for the longest time this is your time you will be able to make one at the end of this tutorial um let me know what you guys think and let me know if you have any video suggestions of course feel free to let me know down in the comment section and if you like this video give me a big thumbs up as well and yeah let's get right into the video so for this one i am going to use a three millimeter but i'm also using a medium weight yarn so you can use any yarn of your choice, especially when you're starting, you don't have to focus on the size of the yarn and the size of the hook you're using. I'm just showing you guys the ones I'm using for this particular tutorial. So to make a slip knot, everybody has, actually has, I feel like a lot of, there are so many other methods, but what works for me is what I'm going to show you guys. So what I usually do is I grab my yarn and then I just simply make as if i'm making a knot so i'm gonna grab my yarn pass it through these two fingers and i'm just going to pass the yarn right on top of the finger right there and from here on i'm just going to go underneath this and i grab the yarn right there and as you can see i have a slip knot and then i'm going to grab my crochet hook and just going to pull this through and that is how I make my slip knot. There are so many other ways you can go about it. But again, this is what works for me. So I'm going to show you guys again. So what I usually do is I'll grab my yarn on my right finger. Right hand, sorry. And I'm going to make sure these two fingers are right here. Take my yarn and pass it. I also make sure that the yarn goes right on top of my left finger. But then I'm grabbing the edge of the yarn at my right hand. So... The yarn is going through my left hand like this. This too always locks it like because I feel like it gives me more power to play around with the yarn. And I'm going to make sure the edge of the yarn is at my right hand. And so from here on with this my two finger, I'm just going to take the yarn and wrap it around this two finger like this. And then I'll just pass it to the end. So again, grab the yarn with my right hand and pass it around my left these two left fingers right there and from here on i'm just going to take the top of this yarn like this and i'm going to grab this yarn that i just the edge of the yarn that i just passed and like this i have a knot so all i'm going to do is just make this a, a bit smaller so my crochet hook can actually fit inside this knot so right there i have my slip knot so that is what i do for slip knot so now the next thing we are going to go is to make a chain because before you start working on anything you want to start with a chain um this is the basic i think the basic traditional chain method but they also have like a foundation chain which i personally never use um i just don't i just don't use it but i guess you can google that online in case you want to learn how to make that yourself but i'm going to show you guys what the traditional chain is like for me personally, when it comes to holding my crochet hook and my, my yarn, there are so many methods. Again, I stick to one because it's comfortable and it's just easier for me. But there are so many methods. A lot of people can actually, I think there's this method, which most people use, but I personally use this method because I feel like it gives me more control over the crochet hook itself. If I do like this, I do have control control over the crochet hook but it's a little bit slower um, than what I would actually want it to be because when it's like this I can move this very fast and easily as well than when it's like this so there are different methods you can use 
depending on how comfortable you are and what com what is comfortable for you and also when it comes to this because this is going to be your working yarn and this is going to be the edge of the yarn so you're going to work with this particular side of the yarn because this is the edge you don't need the side anymore this was only important for the slip knot so from here on we are going to use the working yarn to make the chains and when it comes to the working yarn there are also so many other methods on how you can actually hold this yarn a lot of people hold their yarn like this some people wrap it around their fingers which i also do sometimes when i'm extremely tired with my main method because i have my main method that i use if you if you've been looking at my crochet tutorials or you've seen me crochet a lot of people comment on how i actually just hold my yarn which is this way honestly this is the best way i can hold my yarn because i feel like with this the yarn moves easily can you see the way the yarn is moving through my fingers that's how it, it moves but if i wrap my yarn like this i find myself wanting to it the tension is just it's not loose enough for me to just literally play around with it i have to loosen this the entire time for me to get um the amount of yarn that i need for the chain or for the project that i'm working on so i personally just lock the yarn with this finger so i make sure i lock my yarn with this finger and then the rest of my fingers actually do come in handy because when this yarn is locked i also need the rest of my fingers to power the tension through the yarn so it can go actually go smoothly so again I think I'm blabbing, but this is really complicated and I cannot show you the actual way to hold this because I feel like it's different for everyone. I know a lot of people who crochet like this, but then they are way faster than when they crochet like this. And I know other people like myself who crochet is way faster than when I crochet like this. So you would have to see which one works for you and which one you're comfortable with. But again, back to what I was saying, because I'm a right-handed person, my working yarn is going to be on my left, and then my the edge of my yarn is going to be on my right, because I'm working to this end. If you're left-handed, I guess it's going to be the opposite. So let's get into the chain. So, so what I do, I, again, like I mentioned, the rest of my fingers actually come in handy, because again, I need to support the edge of this yarn. I don't have anything to, so if I crochet like this there is no way I can see there is no way I can because I need to support the rest of the of my working arm and the rest of my fingers so what I usually do is I take my middle finger and this finger I just hold the yarn on this side so you see right here I'm just going to grab the yarn especially the edge of the yarn so I have support so i'm going to grab the edge of the yarn and this two is going to hold it there again you can see that the yarn actually goes underneath this two of the rest of my fingers but again this is optional guys you don't have to do this so to make a chain what i always suggest and what i always advise is you want to make sure the crochet hook is facing you so this hook has to be facing you if it's like this you're going to have problem with grabbing your yarn see it easily comes out because there is no um, this side is smooth so you want to make sure the hook itself is facing you so you can easily pull through and grab the yarn so I'll suggest you make sure this hook is facing you at all times especially when you're a beginner and then when I what I do is for a chain after making a slip knot right now your crochet hook is inside your knot you are going to take your crochet hook and you're going to grab the yarn like this so you see what i just did so you're taking your hook and you're taking the hook underneath the yarn and then afterwards just because this yarn this crochet hook is facing you it's going to be really easy for you to take this right through this first loop so this is usually called a loop right so again you're going to grab the yarn take the crochet hook and put it underneath the yarn and you're just going to pull through this first loop so again wrap the yarn and you want to make sure the crochet hook is facing you so it's easier for you to just pull through this first 
group and right there you have your first chain yay <laughs> so right there you have your first chain so from here on you're going to do the same exact thing so again making sure the crochet hook is facing you you're going to go underneath the working yarn again this is the working yarn you're going to go underneath the working yarn and you're going to pull through the loop and there you have your second chain again making sure the crochet hook is facing you you're going to go through the working yarn and you're going to pull through the loop that is on the crochet hook right there so you can make another chain right there you have your third chain another one you're going to make sure the crochet hook is facing you grab your yarn pull through the loop that is on the crochet hook again like you see i my my these two fingers were literally here when i started but as i go i make sure i push my fingers upwards because that is going to support me the entire time so if my fingers are still down here i can still do the chain but it's going to be difficult because and it's also going to be slow because my fingers are all the way down here while i need to support the crochet hook on this side so i have to make sure i move my finger fingers the entire time that i'm working on the chain so again for a chain you want to make sure this push hook is facing you you're grabbing your yarn and you're pulling through the loop right there so i'm going to go ahead and make a few chains so we can get started on the first stitch so right here i have 25 chains so you're going to go ahead and just continue to do chains until you feel comfortable enough don't be too hard on yourself this is not something you're going to get at one go you want to make sure you continue to practice until your fingers feel comfortable until you have the perfect method for you like i said you don't have to do the method that i am doing um there are so many different methods you can you do just find the one that feels comfortable for you and stick to it that is the best advice i can actually give anyone just find what is comfortable and stick to it if my method is comfortable then make sure you pick it up and continue to practice if it's not then find what is comfortable for you so now that i have 25 chains i'm going to go ahead and show you guys how to make a single crochet so a single crochet is uh, i think it's a basic stitch like that is one of the easiest stitch um, it is a bit shorter than the rest of the other stitch, but it is also um, very stretchy and it's also a very, very beautiful stitch and one of the easiest basically. So for a single crochet, what we are going to do is you're going to go into the second chain. So mostly after making a chain and you want to get started with your stitch, you can actually chain one at the beginning just the chain one usually does not count as a stitch so that is basically um, a starting chain and a starting chain is because the reason why you need to chain one at the beginning is because if you want to go into this chain right this chain right there you cannot well you can but then it's going to just unravel like right there it's just it's not going to make any sense can you see what is going on right there it's going to unravel because you just cannot go into this first uh, chain from the crochet hook so that this is the hook so you cannot go right into this first chain that is why mostly you need to chain one at the beginning because that is going to be a starting chain so for example if i do chain one now i can easily go into the stitch because i already have one right there i hope you guys understand so that is why mostly you need to chain most of the pattern and most of the tutorials is chain one at the beginning because if you don't you probably miss a chain and if ex exactly if you're using a pattern especially if you're using a pattern and it says chain 25 you want to make sure you chain 25 if not your project may actually come out smaller than you want it to so that is the reason why every, uh, most pattern and most tutorials is chain one at the beginning i hope that was on that was clear so from here on we always want to make sure you go into the second chain from the hook that is for a single crochet some other stitches you can go into the third depending on the pattern but for this first stitch it's a single crochet stitch we are going to go ahead and skip this stitch right there and we are going to go into this second stitch so again making sure this crochet hook is facing you this has to face you all time always just so it's easier for you to just go around the grab the yarn pull through it's just the easiest way for you to do so so you want to make sure this is facing you 
at all time and then right now you're going to go into the second chain so we have this first this is the first chain from the hook so that's the hook and there is the first chain and this is the second chain right let me zoom in a bit for you all so this is the first chain and right there we have a second chain so you go into the second chain so you don't grab the yarn for now because this is a single crochet you're going to go with your crochet hook into the second chain right into the second chain right there so now we have basically have two loops because this is the first one and then the chain that you just insert your crochet hook into so from here on again making sure the crochet hook is facing you you're going to grab the yarn right there and you're going to pull through see what i just did let's do that again so you're going to insert your crochet hook into the second chain from the hook and making sure this is facing you you're going to grab the yarn just the way you did the chain and you're going to pull through right there you're just going to pull through the chain not pulling through the entire loop on the chain so right here you have two loops right these are called loops so you have the first one and then you have the second one so end of a single crochet you're just going to again grab your yarn and you're going to pull through all two of the loops right there and right here you have your first single crochet again so repeat this we are going to go into the second chain the next chain sorry so right here we're going to this next chain so these are the chains you can easily just see them right here chain 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 so these are the chains so you're going to go into the second chain from the hook you're going to insert your crochet hook into that chain right there grab your crochet yarn pull through and you want to make sure this is loose enough and not tight and also not loose just an average so you can actually make sure your yarn your crochet can actually just move through the yarn basically it shouldn't be too loose and it also shouldn't be too tight so from here on again we have two loops we are going to grab the yarn and we are going to pull through all two of the loops and that is a single crochet again again for the third time you're going to go into the next chain which is this chain right here insert your crochet hook into that chain making sure the crochet hook is facing you because you don't want it to be facing this end make sure it's facing you grab your yarn pull through two of the crochet loop right here you have two you're going to grab your yarn and pull through the last two again and for the last time you're going to go into this chain the next chain insert your crochet hook right into that chain making sure the hook is facing you you're going to grab your yarn pull through like that yarn over you're going to yarn over and then you're going to pull through the last two loops so i'm going to continue with single crochet so just so right here i have the single crochet is complete again this is um what mine looks like yours doesn't have to look like this yours might be a little bit on neat it might be a little bit shaky it's fine i'll just suggest you continue to practice a single crochet until you get um make sure you have the same amount of chain so remember i chained 25 at the beginning so you want to make sure you have at the end of this first row you have 25 single crochets if you don't have 25 single crochets it's perfectly fine it's really fine just continue to practice until you get to that point it's fine don't rush don't be too hard on yourself like i mentioned i feel like that is part of the process you need to go through that stage of not having the same amount of chain we all did everybody did go through and i still do sometimes so it's perfectly fine so now i'm going to show you guys how to make a half double crochet we are going to go ahead and do half double crochet right on top of this single crochet row so now we are going to get started with the half double crochet and an half double crochet is basically um one, i think the second easiest stage for me personally and it also it's not too long so as you can see a single crochet is actually a very i think it's just a two loop stitch i don't know if it's i'm supposed to call it that again i don't know the terms for crochet i just 
kind of make my own terms and i wish i hope it's right and you understand what i'm saying but again for after look which is just basically i think two and a half look you see you see what i mean by that so to get started with the after book crochet again like i mentioned you want to make sure you chain one at the beginning of each row because that is going to help you to keep a right amount and also going to help you help you to get into the next stitch basically like i mentioned so i'm going to go ahead and chain one again to make a chain this is why i said you need to make sure you're comfortable with making a chain first before you go into single crochet because you literally are going to use a chain for every row you're basically going to use it so making a chain is the most important thing so you want to make sure you get really comfortable with making a chain again to make a chain you're going to make sure the crochet hook is facing you you're going to grab your yarn and you're going to pull through the loop that is already on the crochet hook like that so that is a chain so now I'm going to go ahead and turn and to turn your work, you're basically just going to turn it like this because we are going to be working to the opposite side of the crochet of the row. And so to get started with the after work crochet, remember for a single crochet, we went right into the second, the first chain from the hook, get the crochet hook, grab the, the yarn and then pull through. We had two loops, grab the yarn and pull through all two. That, that was a single crochet. So now an after book crochet is a little bit different from a single crochet. So for an after book crochet, instead of inserting the crochet hook into the, to the, to the first stitch, we are going to go ahead and yarn over. So this is basically yarn over. And again, making sure the crochet hook is facing you because if it's facing this end, there is no way you can yarn over and it will actually stay on the hook because the the hook itself is facing the opposite end and it should be facing you so again with the crochet hook facing you you're going to yarn over and yarn over is basically taking the crochet hook and putting it underneath the yarn this is why i personally just prefer to hold my crochet hook yarn like this because it's easier for me so i'm going to yarn over and right into this first chain first stitch sorry right into the stitch i am going to insert my crochet hook right into it so again yarn over and insert your crochet hook right into this first so these are the stitches and this is where you're going to insert your crochet hook so right into this i'm going to insert my crochet hook right there so see i insert my crochet hook and then it automatically goes behind the yarn so this is the hook and this is the yarn right and this is what makes it easier again making sure the crochet hook is facing you you can easily grab this yarn because you need to and then you're going to pull through the same stitch that you actually insert your crochet hook in so now you have three so you have one loop two loop and then the third loop on this crochet hook so for after book crochet you're just going to now go over and yarn over so you're going to yarn over and you're going to pull through all three of the loop on the crochet hook so that is going to be after book crochet that is what i mean by it's like a two and a half loop kind of thing instead of like two loop stitch basically so you're going to yarn over and then you're going to pull through all three of the loop making sure you're going through all three so that is one after book crochet very easy but again it's going to take your time it's going to take you time and it's going to take lots of practice for you to actually get it so again for the second after book crochet like we did we are going to yarn over and yarn over is basically just inserting your crochet hook underneath the yarn to make sure you grab the crochet hook and from here on you're going to go into this next chain again these are the chains these are the stitches we are going to go into you're going to go into this next stitch with your crochet hook so now we have two loops on the hook right so you're going to go into this next stitch right into the stitch and automatically the crochet hook goes underneath behind the yarn so that this is the yarn right at the front and then the crochet hook goes behind from here on you're just going to make sure you grab your crochet hook and that is easy because this is already facing you so you're just going to grab see it automatically is, grabs the yarn and you're going to pull through that same loop and right here you have three loops on your crochet hook 
so from here on making sure this is facing you as well you're going to yarn over and yarn over is basically insert your crochet hook underneath the yarn so if it's if the crochet hook falls on this side the yarn in the yarn then you can just easily grab it but if it falls to the front of the yarn automatically you're just going to yarn over which is just inserting your crochet hook underneath the yarn so from here on you have one two three and then the four loop fourth loop right there what you're going to do is you're going to pull through all three of this loop so you want to make sure this is loose enough again like i said you want to make sure your crochet hook can easily easily move around inside the loop so it's not too loose but also not too tight so from here on you're just going to pull through all three of that loop so right there you have another after book crochet we are going to do this for two more after book crochet so again for after book crochet you're going to yarn over like this insert your crochet hook into the next next stitch so you want to make sure you go after one stitch you go to the next after one you go to the next because that that is how you're going to get a 25 after book crochet at the end because we did 25 chains at the beginning if the pattern says you should increase then you can go and add two but that is not what we're doing for now i think that would need another video about increasing and decreasing which i'll make of course so because we are just doing a straight pattern with no increasing and no decrease you want to make sure you go after one stitch you go into the next stitch you go into the next stitch into the next into the next until you get to the very end you can also count your stitches just to make sure you have the same amount so right here i have one two three and this is about to be the fourth stitch so again you're going to grab your yarn insert your crochet hook into this next stitch right into there and then it automatically goes behind the crochet yarn behind the yarn and then you're going to grab because it's all automatically behind it automatically grabs the yarn for itself making sure this is facing you it's going to grab the yarn for itself and you're going to pull through and now you have three loops right in this crochet hook and because the crochet hook automatically comes in front of the yarn and not behind you're going to yarn over basically insert the crochet hook underneath the yarn and from here on you're going to pull through all three of this loop on the crochet hook and lastly you're going to yarn over because the crochet hook automatically comes before the yarn yarn over insert your crochet hook into this next stitch and because it goes underneath or behind the yarn you're going to grab the yarn inside and now that the crochet hook is in front you're going to yarn over and you're going to pull through all three of the loop so right there we have five after book crochet and this is how it looks again you can also see the difference between the single crochet and after book crochet the after book crochet is a little bit taller than the single crochet so i am going to continue to do one after book crochet until the very end so we can get started with the next stitch i'm going to show you guys the last stitch for this tutorial which is going to be a double crochet and that is the most used stitch in the crochet community i can say for sure that 90 percent of my crochet projects are made of double crochet most of the stitches are also made of double crochets so it's the most used stitch um but it's also not too difficult it's also a basic stitch which i'm going to show you guys of course so that is going to be the last stitch for this tutorial but i am going to come up with another tutorial to show you guys um different other things of tips on how you can actually perfect all these stitches together and how they can be used as well so for this particular stitch we are going to go ahead and chain one again because like i said this chain one basically just starts the foundation of the row you're about to get into and after chaining one like i mentioned you're going to just turn because we are going to be working to the opposite side of this project so for our after double crochet what we do is basically the same as a double for a double crochet sorry what we are going to do is basically similar to after double crochet the only difference is remember at after double crochet when we had three loops we went ahead and just yarn over and 
actually took everything out and then we ended up with one for a double crochet the steps goes bit by bit so for this one you're going to again yarn over like i mentioned it's easy it's the same as a double it's easy it's, like i mentioned it's similar to half double crochet which is the one we did before this so you're going to yarn over and again like i said if the crochet hook is in front of the yarn you're going to yarn over and if it's behind you're going to grab that's that is what i think one of the easiest way for you to know when you should grab it just easily goes like that basically so now that the crochet hook is in front we are going to yarn over and this is our first stitch again you want to make sure you identify all the stitches because you have to go into each and one of them making sure you don't skip any of these so after yarning over you're going to go into this first stitch and right there i'm going to go with my crochet hook and because the crochet hook comes on the behind the yarn i'm going to grab this and pull through the seam so right here i have a three double crochets on my loop on my crochet hook three loops on my crochet hook right so for half double crochet what we did was yarn over and pull through all three of the loops so for a double crochet we are going to do something a little bit different so for a double crochet you're going to yarn over and we are going to pull through this first two so again we have one two three we have one two three we are going to pull through this and this together so what to do that you're just going to again making sure your crochet hook can move freely in between these loops because you don't want it to be too tight if it's too tight you might not be able to take this off the first two loop or the tension is just too much it won't be able to go so make sure this is free this is another tip that i'm giving you so again after grabbing your yarn you're going to pull through the first two you want to make sure you have control see and right when i'm actually after the two i'm going to make sure i take this out because i'm not pulling through this loop i'm only pulling through the first two and from here on i have two loops but we want to make sure we have one loop at the end of this stitch at the end of one stitch you want to make sure you have one loop that's the end of each stitch so to get the one loop so now we have two we are going to go ahead and yarn over again the crochet hook is at the front of the yarn so we are going to yarn over again and this time around we are going to go ahead and pull through this two last loop so right here you're going to just pull through two of them so now we have one loop so this means we already have one half one double crochet complete and of course i'm going to show you guys again so for the next stitch we want to make sure we are going into this next stitch right again making this is one of the most important thing if you want to make sure you have a straight and you have the same amount of stitches like the same chain you did you want to make sure you identify the stitches so you can go right into them with one 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 each if the pattern does not call for increasing in this case it's just a basic um double crochet stitch right so for again you're going to yarn over and you're going to insert your crochet hook into this next stitch right into it and then the crochet hook automatically comes behind the yarn so you're going to grab it and pull through and now you have three loops on this crochet hook you're going to yarn over and you're going to pull through this first two loop and to do that you're just going to make sure you pull slowly making sure you have control and then that's it now you have two and because we need one to finish off the this stitch you're going to yarn over again and you're going to pull through this last two loops on the crochet hook and right there you have your second double crochet and this is what it looks like next you're going to again yarn over insert your crochet hook into the third chain into the third stitch the next stitch you're going to grab your yarn pull through now you have three loops you're going to grab your yarn again for the second time pull through the first two loop now you have two more you're going to grab your yarn again and pull through the last two loop and there you have your third double crochet 
and lastly for double crochet you're going to yarn over insert your crochet into the next stitch because right here we just did one so we are going to go into this next stitch right there grab a yarn because the crochet goes behind the yarn so you're going to grab it pull through now we have three loops you're going to yarn over now you have four but you're going to make sure you pull through this first two loops there you have two loops to end off the stitch you're going to yarn over again and you're going to pull through the last two loops and that is basically it for a double crochet again you can see that a double crochet is way longer than the half double crochet and half double crochet is longer than the single crochet so you can actually see the difference between the stitches as well so i am just going to repeat this until the very end and this is basically it for this first 101 crochet tutorial um again like i've been saying throughout this tutorial this is going to take time and practice for you to really be able to get this done so don't be too hard on yourself go easy practice as much as you can again like i suggested i think it's just easier for you to learn each step one after the other before you go to the next step that way it's going to be easy for you to actually get started with your first crochet project so guys as you can see this is my after book my single crochet after book crochet my double crochet complete I really really hope this was helpful to you all and I really hope you enjoyed this video and you learned something as well and if you do like it of course give me a big thumbs up so I would know and if you haven't subscribed yet feel free to join my family and I guess I'll see you guys in another video ciao ciao